guys, it's Elisa. I'm here today with a special guest. She's my girlfriend named Elisa also. We grew up together um, and we are both here because she went through colon cancer stage three a year ago. She'll explain it to you all. And um, we wanted to talk about something that we both have been affected by um, throughout this process of chemo and probably something that is affecting other people, which is why we wanted to bring it up. And it has to do with nutrition during chemo and how your body changes. Yeah, it, it's something that like when most people get cancer, whether it's colorectal cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uh, most people lose a lot of weight and become quite sickly, frail, they can't eat. Um, for both Elisa and I, um, I know for me, right away I was starting to gain weight. Um, it had to do with the chemo pills I was taking. I don't know if I'm, did I mention that you had stage three colorectal cancer? I don't even know if I mentioned that. Yes, I had, I had um, um, stage three, um, it, I had it in my lymph nodes um, and I was quite sick and I didn't even know, it doesn't run in the family. It was a fluke. I was 46 years old and um, this June of 2019 will be three years that I was diagnosed with it. Um, and it's a whole, it's a whole different life for me. Um, but you know, it's always you know, you it's a whole new world after you've had cancer. Yeah, I think Elisa knows all about that. But. Yeah. So the main thing that Elisa and I have in common, amongst many other things, is that we both have gained weight. Um, and my mom made a joke of it where we were sitting in chemo one day, and she said. It's amazing how much weight you put on, and you had. My mom said the same thing to me. She said, "I've never seen you fatter." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was more. I was Her heavier now yeah. than when I gave birth to two children. Yeah, who are now nineteen and twenty. Yeah, almost. Nine. Yeah. Um, so, so this is what my thought was: is I came up with that my chemo pills with chemo and radiation, and then I had surgery with an ileostomy bag. Um, and I was starving all the time. I've never been so hungry in my life. Me too. Yeah. Starving. And binging. We, and we're trying to First figure time out. In my life. I never, a binge, binge and me, like, they're not like even the same sentence. Like, binge and me, I don't relate. And, and, and I was I'm always binging. Binging. Yeah. And I, I was always, I always tried to watch my weight, but I have always loved sugar, like major yes. sugar. But there was something about it going that time where I knew maybe it was a, a feeling of like i'm not dying i'm not gonna right. die and i just kept eating yeah and i think like a huge part about it obviously it has a lot to do with what medicines that you're put on like i get put on decadrone which is a um, um like a steroid that makes you hungry but i think a lot of dealing with the situation is about choosing the right nutrition if this is going to happen to you which is what like we're going to talk about now because it was neither of us have done it like we both talk about it and try but um just changing your diet for cancer which is for example cutting sugar out of your diet when you're doing chemotherapy and perhaps beyond chemotherapy right which every doctor was saying you know keep, eat a lot of protein eat a lot of smoothies and i really didn't listen to that because food to me always in my life I've always been a huge chocolate eater me too and there's just some things I it's comfort it's comfort yeah. yeah I mean I'd much rather have food than a beer or, me, or, I mean I, I, that's just yeah and and I think that we've come we've come to a point where that's something that we've read they say it first for colorectal cancer is to cut out sugars eat right exercise keep your, your weight to a, um, a healthy a healthy weight um, and for me to get colonoscopies you know I still have to get it every like eight months for a while yeah but so we were trying to think of what how do we do it do we cut it down cold turkey I probably would get the shakes yeah uh, I don't know so this is the situation so we are like going to try and live life 
without our sugars. We're going to try and do it because... Um, it is. Mm, I won't be able to drive for yeah. probably about a month. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when you're in cancer, you have to fight your battles through nutrition and exercise. That's the only way. That but you're really good at exercising. Yes, I'm. I I'm very. She reg- loves I, I exercise all, all the time, despite the weight, despite everything. I actually did yoga yesterday. Which I, when I was going through cancer, absolutely not. I, yeah. I don't even. I just. I was exhausted. And you're exhausted. But I don't I'm know exhausted. how you do that. I didn't leave my house for an entire week this week. Yeah, but that, that was typical. That, that, that's another reason why for the binging, I think, is because of the fact that, like, when you're... I'm in my sixth round of chemo now. Like, I just finished round six. Two different drugs. Um, I started with um, the little red devil drug and the ones that shrink cancers, and now I'm on Taxol, and I'm tired after my... Yeah, so. Yeah, so I literally spent a week at home, and like that's the easiest time to eat chocolates and have comfort foods. You're tired, you're home. And you're hungry. And you're hungry. But see, and then I kept telling you that being hungry, thank God you're hungry. Because when you look, I mean, I remember being at chemo, and there were people in their hospital bed getting chemo, and very sickly. And that was, to me, it was like they were at the end of their life. Yeah. So now I think like to like put everything together about this struggle that one goes through like the entire session of chemotherapy like I do she did different cancers um, is to you know try and become accountable I suppose it's true in our nutrition right and Uh so we're gonna have each other to bounce off of you know so I think like if you can find a somebody if you're with your nutrition with your you know to sort of like hold accountable for you and vice versa I, I agree and to have like yes I agree because it's it's nobody else's fault but mine that I yeah. choose to get chocolate and, and you know yeah and for colorectal cancer it is known like the Mayo Clinic has put out some information that the highest rate of, rec- of return I know. It's of colorectal cancer, and one of the causes of it is, diet. is sugar. Mm-hmm. It's poor diet and sugar. And with breast cancer, I would say alcohol has a lot of accountability too, and it's with breast cancer. And so I'm guilty of that because I, I while I'm in chemo, I don't touch alcohol, but like when I'm outside of chemo, I mean, it was my birthday weekend, I filmed myself like having drinks. Yeah, that, the alcohol doesn't, it was me, just was food. Yeah. Like I c- c- could care less about alcohol. Yeah, but yeah, no. For me, um, to have a Starbucks mocha, like dreamland. Yeah. But you know, again, it's it isn't healthy, um, and even to stick sweet and low equal Splenda in it is also not healthy. Yeah. And, and how I mean, it's a. I think I'll go into shock. I know it's a struggle, but man, so is fucking chemo. You know, and so is cancer, and it's a struggle. So I mean, okay. So like for me, they told me it'll be if I got diagnosed. I finished at the end January of two thousand eighteen. So like for the next four years, if I can finish out five years without, you know, you're pretty much home safe. Um, what was I getting at? Sugar-free. Um, yeah, sugar-free. Trying. We're right. trying. Like, that would be a really yeah. good way. So, yeah. for you, they say how many years? Five. You're also five years, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, the key is to try. Like, I'm not so great with sticking No, through. me neither. Yeah. We're going to try. We're, we're, not, gonna try. We're, not, we're not saying that we're going to do it perfectly, but we're honestly going to be honest about it, whatever it is, whatever it ends up, whether we end up keeping with it or not. Um, it's going to be, I mean, do you drink black coffee? No. You don't even drink coffee. I drink coffee every day. But Three times you, a day. With what in it? Soy milk and mostly soy milk. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, I mean again. Look at me, I'm, I'm, I'm already drinking orange soda. This is how not bad, soda, it's not orange soda, it's a water. It's, it's a water, water with orange, okay. okay. But again, anyways, I, do we live our life, so our question is to okay. the viewers. Yes. So. Do we live our life going stringent and being like hyper sensitive and you know only go doing organic and becoming so neurotic about it where 
we're not living life or is there a happy me what's the happy medium my first thing I'm gonna do is try and cut out sugar that's gonna be like my first thing and then after a month if I can do it then I'll you know like I'll continue on with perhaps like carbs you know what I mean but I, I want to do it ever super slowly it has to be slowly you know for it to actually work like I'll um, be shaking. Yeah, yeah, it has to be done slowly. You know, maybe have it like every other day for a little while. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, but the ultimate goal we want it is for just health and, and life and for women going through the same problems and same dilemmas to know this, that there's options out there. Yeah. And turning 50. And turning 50. So, peace. Yes. In conclusion... Um, I'm here to support my friends. Yeah. And we all go through different struggles. Yeah. But. And we'll be together with the struggle of trying to, um, get on that health track. Get on the health track. Get on our train. Get on the health train. We look forward to hearing from you. Yes. We love you. Love you. Love you all. Peace and health. Peace and health. Peace and health.